hell is a real place. So if reality is a story, if reality is art like we've talked about, hell and heaven is really a question of shadow or light. Evil, what we would call evil, what you want to hang on to, what you want to cherish and, and save in yourself, and righteousness, where you let go of yourself, you are purified. A lot of people like to think that hell is some sort of ethereal little absence, emptiness. We don't know what hell is, we don't like to talk about it because, well, it's a little bit judgmental to say that you may or may not be going to hell. When I was in a conversation with some friends, in graduate school we were in a pub, and she looks at me and says, do you think I'm going to hell? Why does God allow people to end up here? Or, or even more actively, why does God send them into the outer darkness. My immediate answer was just a question. Don't you want to? You just told me even if there was this God, you wouldn't serve him. If this God turns out to be real, do you want to spend eternity with him? Do you want to be in his presence? If you hate him, if you do not want to be with him, why would he keep you there? It's a kindness of him to not make you. I don't think anybody in hell would say, I want to be here. But all of them, I think, will want to be there more than in heaven. And as we each die as we each reach our mortality we're gonna have a final conversation there's gonna be a moment of will you bend or will you leave will you serve or will you go off to this place and serve yourself and follow your own desires into the darkness those are your choices he's gonna spread his goodness over every planet over over every sphere and into every corner of this universe he's going to be everywhere his righteousness will be everywhere and if you hate that if you despise it where, where, where can you be? Where do you want to go? And we're right back to the problem of evil. Right back again, where people say, how could an all-good, all-powerful God throw me in hell forever and just leave me there? You're either in his throne room, in his presence, which you despise, or you are outside of it. You're cast out. You're in the darkness, which is hell. Is that a problem? Is it a problem for an all-good God not to keep you in his presence when he hates everything you stand for and you hate everything he stands for. That's to put it on a, on a human level. Two people, if these were two people, would you want to share the same thing? And the answer is you don't. You hate him, he'll cast you out. What do you have to complain about? It's where you would choose to go anyway. And when it comes to the end, and, and you really have to choose, will you bend before your maker or will you go into the darkness, which is a real darkness and a real place where you're gonna be left with nothing but yourself? and your own pettiness and your own evils. The question is, which part of the picture are you gonna be? Are you gonna be that black shadow, that darkness underneath the tree, or are you gonna be up in the branches in the sun? Where will you be? It's not a question of, oh, God must be evil because there's still hell. And of course, there are people who say, I, I do love God, I don't wanna be in the shadow. I don't wanna be doing what I am doing, whatever, whatever sin that they happen to be struggling with, because everyone is struggling with something, great or small. They want to let go of it. They, they want to be in the light. And they just don't know how. How do you start? Are you here? Are you alive? Do you have fingers? Do you breathe? Are you part of the swirl of this reality? Start with some sort of appreciation for your senses, for your family, for anything. And then thank him for it. Begin with gratitude. And then move on to thanking him for everything. Even your struggles, your trials, the darknesses, the things you have to overcome before you reach your final chapter. This is straight from the Apostle Paul. In all things, Give thanks. Enjoy your ice cream.